Patricia C. McKeesiak wrote the book, Mom, Ma's Deer, Deer's Apron, illustrated by Floyd Cooper. Flip through the title page. There's an author's note. I, re I recently inherited a plain muslin apron that had belonged to Lena, my great grandmother. And although the design is ordinary, the woman who wore it was not. Ma Deer, a short form for Mother Deer, as Lena was affectionately called, was a single parent who raised three children in rural Alabama. In the early 1900s, she made a living cooking, cleaning, washing, and ironing for other people. These were back-breaking chores, more difficult, of course, because there was no electro electric irons, washing machines, or other modern appliances. And the pay was very low, my grandmother told me about her remarkable mother, who worked hard yet always found time for her children and grandchildren sharing funny stories teaching them songs playing games no matter how tired and sore she was these memories inspired me to write this story in which the real ma dear stories songs and games are included here then is my tribute to my great grandmother and also the countless other domestic workers of her generation. From the, them, the apron was convenient, all-purpose tool used to carry wood and kindling to gather eggs and vegetables to wipe their brows in a noonday sun or just hide special treats for a willing helper. Patricia C. McKeesiak, St. Louis, Missouri, 1997. David Earl always knows what day of the week it is. He can tell by the clean, snappy, fresh apron Ma Deer is wearing. A different one for every day. Do you have clothes for every day of the week? Like on Monday you wear this apron, or this shirt, or these pants, or these socks. Monday. David Earl knows it's Monday because Ma Deer puts on her blue apron, the one with the long pocket across the front. It's wash day, and that's where she keeps the clothespins. First, Ma Deer heats water in a big kettle and pours it into several tubs. Then she rolls up her sleeves and scrubs each piece on her rub board. David Earl would rather blow bubbles. But instead, he gathers peach. He gathers peach tree leaves for Ma Deer to use in the last rinse. That's the secret to bring to my bright wash, Ma Deer. Explain, as they hung, hang out the sheets. Do you think your parents have any secrets? What do you think those are? Keep your clothes all clean and fresh. At day's end. When the last sweet-smelling piece has been taken off the line and folded, Ma Deer rests in her rocking chair. Her hands are red and chafed. She's so tired, yet she holds out her arm. Come, she says. David Earl crawls into her, his mother's lap. She reaches inside her blue apron pocket and takes out a wooden clothespin. Once there was a brave soldier, she began... The clothespin becomes the sol that soldier standing at attention who died fighting out west. David Earl looks at the flag and sword hanging over the mantle. His name was Sergeant David Earl Bramlett, Sr. The same as mine, I expect. I'm a, I'm a junior, he adds, finishing the story. He's heard many times before. Too soon, it's time for bed. Ma Deer kisses her son goodnight, and he drifts off to sleep, wrapped in a wind-dried sheet that smells of peach blossoms. 
Tuesday. Why do you always wear the yellow apron on ironing day? David Earl wants to know. Yellow is the color of the sun, my dear. My dear answers. And sunshine makes me feel feel good even when I have to iron all day. It's Tuesday and six baskets of clothes sit by the fireplace. Several sizes of irons are being heated over heart coals. David Earl gets to press a few practice pieces. No cat faces now, his mother reminds him. He knows she'll check for any little wrinkles that look like whiskers on, on a piece that has been ironed. Remembering how she taught, David Earl scoops the handful of water from his bowl and sprinkles it over the fabric. Then he irons and irons. See, no cat faces, he says, holding up the handiwork. Oh my goodness, Mom, Ma dear replies, laughing at the scorched rag. The day is long and hot. Ma dear dips the corner of her apron in the cold water and wipes David Earl's face with the other corner. She wipes her own. You guys ever iron clothes? You know, if you let the iron sit there too long, what happens? At last, ironing day is over. All the baskets are filled and ready for delivery. David Earl lies fast asleep on the pallet near the door. A night breeze cools the room. Ma Deer covers the boy with her apron and blows out the candle. Wednesday. After breakfast on Wednesday, Ma Deer ties on her green apron with the hidden pocket, the treasure pocket, David Earl calls it. The boy helps his mother hitch the wagon to Gracious. They load the baskets, then set off across the railroad tracks to the other side of Avery, where the rich people live. Ma Dear lets David Earl hold the reins, but Gracious knows the way. His mother rides looking straight ahead, and he told David Earl to do the same. But as they pass, he can't help sneaking a peek at the big chandelier inside the Grand View Opera House. The mayor stops in front of the large mansion on the corner of Main and Tuckett Streets. David Earl stands quietly beside Ma Deer at the basement door while Miss Hillen back carefully checks the laundry. Your work is good, the woman says flatly, placing a quarter in Ma, Ma Deer's hand. Then casting her eyes down to David Earl, the woman adds, You may have a peach off my tree if you want one. The boy stands erect and lifts his head proudly the way Ma Deer said, says his dad did. No thank you, he answers. On the way home, Ma Deer makes her usual stop at Hanson's General Store, where she buys a few staples and one treat. That evening, David Earl has finished helping with the dinner dishes she reaches inside the apron. Look what I found, she says, pulling a penny peppermint stick from the treasure pocket. What kind of treasures do you think your mom would get you? Do you like peppermint sticks? Maybe like a candy cane in December? We're going to pause this and do a second video.